Primeval Titan. I don't know if it's even a pun to call this card a Titan of the game. If I'm honest, it's not even my favorite of the original five, with Sun Titan being an easy pick, because I love recurring things out of the graveyard in, in base white decks. What are you doing, step bro? But today I want to talk about how Primeval Titan is quite possibly, if not quite clearly, the greatest green creature ever printed. I know that's just better than Tarmogoyf or Uro. Oh, I'm Mark. talking about all of that in today's video. But first, a quick message from our sponsor, which is Magali Villeneuve. That's right, one of the best artists working in Magic at the moment. Her portraits and character work is outstanding. She's famous for cards like Torch of Defiance, for example. And of course, everybody's favorite Narset that stops you drawing cards. Her new Kickstarter is running till mid-March, but it's already hit £100,000 of backing and already hit some of its stretch goals. There are playmats and artist prints on offer, and the playmats are what tickle my fancy. All of them have had their art extended to fit the play Mat. And they're going to be on the stitched edged ultra pro like premium mats and it's all been done by Megali herself. Most excitingly we've got the box art from AFR which shows Dritz versus that dragon whose name I can never remember. Her incredible take on Huntmaster of the Fells, a Lillian Walk of the Dead and most importantly this extended art Narset Parter of Veils playmat that goes so hard. This is gorgeous. There are limited edition playmats, there are prints, there is so much on offer here as part of the Kickstarter and it's being run by Original Magic Art as well who've done Kickstarters in the past that I've worked with that have all been incredible and fulfilled successfully. If you want to get involved, there'll be a link in the description below to go across the Kickstarter. And you've got until March 21st. So don't wait around for too long. I know I said mid-March, that's going to make some of you think, oh, I'll just wait. But you'll probably regret it if you don't get access to these uh, prior to the Kickstarter ending. I don't want to give you FOMO. I just want you not to say, ah, oh, bugger. I meant to order that earlier. Absolute big shout out to Original Magic Art and Magali Villeneuve for wanting to work with me. And I really hope this helps to support the Kickstarter too, because the work she does for Magic is phenomenal. Like, she is... I'm not just saying it, we all agree, right? Her character work is easily some of, if not the best in the game. Parmeal turns a six mana, six, six giant. A creature with tramples so that's got built in evasion. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may search a library for up to two land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped. This motif is present on all of the original Titans from the original uh, uh, cycle, if you will. Each one has a keyword and it enters the battlefield on and on a tap trigger. Well, except for Inferno Titan and uh, Frost Titan, they lost their keywords instead to gain fire breathing on the on the red side, which is kind of like a keyword. And Frost Titan got essentially Ward, which wouldn't get keyworded for another decade. Of all of them, it was the one that saw the most amount of play in Standard. Inferno Titan and Primeval Titan both saw play in the red-green ramp decks of the time. Valakut decks, for example. And a bit later, once one rotation had happened, the Wolf Run ramp decks, of which Brian Kibler took to a Pro Tour win. Kibler's 2012 Pro Tour winning deck would use the Titan as a top-end finisher, as well as a ramp spell, that could find certain key uh, pieces within the mana base that were kill spells in themselves. If you couldn't deal with the trampling 6-6 six, six big chungus. You also have the Kessig Wolf Run to make even your dorks a threat, although I only played one Birds of Paradise, but your Solemn Simulacrums could still beat down. But more importantly, it would find both Kessig Wolf Run and an Igmoth Nexus, allowing you to infect kill people in the air. Being able to combo with your lands specifically is very powerful in Magic because a lot of spells don't tend to interact with your mana base. As Wizards of the Coast have moved further and further away from cards like Wasteland, lands are just more powerful if they can be your combo or win condition. It's very rare to see an Assassin's Trophy or a Vindicate effect get printed into modern Magic. When it does, it's a big notable occasion and will normally lead to content creators like my Self making videos about it. Tron is dead. This is all ominous foreshadowing for why Primeval Titan is the greatest green creature of all time. Hail to the king, baby. To unpack its ability a little bit further, in essence it is a double tutor for two lands. Now that might not seem that big on first glance, but even just grabbing two basic lands accelerates you ahead by two turns of mana. Obvious math, really. This will mean on your following turn you're casting a 9 drop if this was cast on curve, or even a 9 drop if it wasn't cast on curve because some of your original mana dorks will still be around. But wait, there's more. But beyond ramping, it allows you to grab two lands. 
any lands, not even basics. If this grabbed basics, it'd be a lot weaker and probably see very little to no play across the eternal formats. But instead you can get, grab the aforementioned Wolf 1 ramp packages. In modern you can grab one of the double mana bounce lands and a Micasim's Gardens or Nurse's Saga. In timeless you can grab yourselves a Field of the Dead or a Castle Garenbrig to cast your next Titan again. In legacy you can grab more Cal outposts to ramp you towards your old Razi, in some ways coming full circle to originally what the Titan was doing prior to the Inkamoth kills. But all of this is a little bit kind of surface level for why Primeval Titan is so good. Because the fact that you can find any land, it allows you to play toolbox deck lists. Take the Amulet Titan and deck in modern, for example, which I'm going to posit is one of, if not the best deck in modern right now. This is kind of what's led me to make this video, is to talk about how this six mana green card from M11, from 2010 of all years, 13 years ago, 14 years ago approaching, is one of the best green cards of all time because it's still being played today. Anyway, this Amulet Titan list here, as you can see, has some interesting one-offs in its mana base. Firstly, there are two copies of Teleria West, which is a card that can be transmuted. For three mana, you can discard it and go looking for another zero mana card from your deck. That can be a Summoner's Pact or another land. And the way you get Teleria West into your hand most often is you put it into play off a Primeval Titan and with the bounce trigger from one of the bounce lands, just put it back into your hand. Vesuva is a one-off that can copy any of the other utility lands we're about to mention. Slayer's Stronghold allows you to give your Primeval Titan plus two plus zero, Vigilance and Haste, making it a strong blocker, giving it extra power on top of its trampling evasive body, and allowing it to attack and get its on attack trigger, getting you two more lands. And Sun Home Fortress of the Legion allows you to give it double strike and just kill on the spot. All of this in this deck hinges off the fact that these lands don't come into play tapped off the Titan, they come into play untapped off of the Amulet of Vigor, or in some cases off of the three mana <laughs> enchantment Spelunking. In Timeless, Spelunking's doing the Amulet of Vigor impression as well, allowing you to do some of this stuff, but with different versions of these cards. For example, Handware Battlements. Having a toolbox means you can play cards that are good in some matchups but not others, as a one-off. And sometimes, sure, you'll draw it when you don't need it, but if you have a tutor, it makes it consistently easy to get hold of. Very few cards in the game allow you to tutor for two things and put them directly into play and not into hand. Primeval Titan is probably the most famous example of that, with Tooth and Nail coming in a close second, which is a famous finisher in Commander anyway. Historically, tutors have been considered some of the best cards in all of Magic and are often banned. Green Sun Zenith is banned in Modern for the consistency that it would bring to creature decks. Demonic Tutor is often banned or restricted in formats where it has been printed into them, and Birthing Pod is another example of a modern tutor card banned. Birthing Pod is a really interesting example for this. Some of the logic cited for why Pod originally got banned is that it just makes every new creature with an Enter the Battlefield effect or a useful effect uh, stronger because you consistently get to it off of your Pod chains and thus Birthing Pod is made stronger and stronger as creatures get stronger and stronger. This is why I just want to point out and observe that Titan gets better the more lands are printed, the more more powerful lands are printed. In recent time we've had Field of the Dead, Castle Garenbrig, and now Sunken Citadel, which plays well with Castle Garenbrig. All of these are new lands that are powerful in themselves, but when they can be tutored for and consistently played to make your game plan consistent, and consistent is the key here. Prime Time is one of the most consistent finishing cards in all of Magic, I would say, because it allows you to find the game plan you need for the situation you need. The toolbox discussion again. Prime Time gets better as the lands get better, and it makes it me think that one day we'll see more bands of Prime Time in other formats. Titan is banned in Commander, and I think with the power creep of contemporary magic, there is an argument that it wouldn't be quite as good as it once was if unbanned, but it's true that the game revolves around Titan. People will flicker it, they will bounce it back to hand and replay it, they will copy it, they will steal it, and they will reanimate it. Primeval Titan is a commonly messed around with card that the game revolves around. Whether that's a good enough reason to keep it on the ban list, I'm not 100% convinced. I'll have to play some games with it, but it does get players hugely ahead with two land drops. It is one of the best lands in Magic. We all remember in Commander is that getting two forests is good, but getting a Cabal Coffers and um, Urborg, or getting a Gaia's Cradle and something else, it just gets a little bit absurd. Even Primeval Titan that we have at home, Sylvan Primordial, is currently banned in Commander. And I guess saying it's Primeval Titan we've got at home is a little bit unfair. It doesn't trigger on uh, attack, but on entering the battlefield it destroys target non-creature permanent for each 
opponent. And for each opponent destroyed this way, you get to search over for a forest card and put it onto the battlefield tap and shuffle your library. It doesn't do it twice, it doesn't do it on attacks, and it only grabs forests, but it's still bannable because, well, they tried to make a primeval titan that was slightly worse in some ways, but primarily was better in a multiplayer environment. It even scales if you're playing a five or six player game, allowing you to jump hugely. Flickering this thing was kind of not kind of, it was quite literally disgusting, and this card should stay banned, absolutely. But it's not just that the ban status in Commander that makes this card so good. Like I said, just this past weekend, first place in the Modern Showcase with a 10-1 win was the Titan list I showed you earlier by Xantos Cell. This is easily one of the best, if not the best decks in Modern right now. Beyond this, there's Mono Green, Red Green, and Green Blue versions of Titan decks in Timeless, the eternal format on Arena cropping up. Now in this circumstance, Primeval Titan gets to go get a card that is banned in most formats. Field of the Dead is very, very powerful, especially if your card is grabbing it and another card that meets the seven card uh, necessity. Uh, Primeval Titan's kind of dumb. So Primeval Titan's power absolutely comes from the fact that it can grab all of these utility lands in different formats that allow you to do interesting combos or sideboard tech, grabbing a Bajuka Bog where you need it. But seeing extensive play in the best decks in Timeless and Modern isn't enough for some people. I mean, it's legacy, it's well, vintage play is minimal and it's legacy play is primarily in Cloud Post and at a stretch in decks like Nick Fit. So it's not exactly a key player there, but it is playable in a deck that's considered a real deck. Another reason that I got to thinking about Titan being the best green creature ever printed was because it not only was it winning Pro Tours back when it was in Standard, but it's been in Pro Tour winning decks multiple times over the years too. And or more or just top eighting or, or day twoing a lot of events too with a high conversion. The exact numbers I haven't looked up specifically, but I want to highlight some examples of this recently, or at least famously. First of all, it was in the Pro Tour winning bet deck Summer Bloom that got Summer Bloom banned. I remember thinking that the Titan deck was a flash in the pan, and when Summer Bloom got banned, I remember thinking, well, I'm glad that's over. Fast forward, what is it, eight, nine, ten years or whatever it's been, and Titan is still a prominent modern deck? I was very clearly wrong on that count. At the most recent modern Pro Tour, Dominic Harvey took Ambulant Titan into the top eight, playing four copies of Primeval Titan in the deck. Bear in mind that Pro Tour was won by Black Red Scam with four copies of Fury that is now banned. So I was playing these banned cards and still got into the top eight. And then I started to think, like, are there other contenders? Tarmogoy, for example, is cheap as chips now. Well, the, the cost doesn't really get you there because Titan's around four bucks thanks to reprints and similar. But Tarmogoyf sees virtually no play across older formats now with a small smidgen of play in things like Historic or Timeless. And there are other cards with much more prolific career histories when you look at the numbers. Watching any MTG Ninzon video about a uh, about Mono Green, you find things like Tireless Tracker and Den Protector putting up more numbers in terms of GP Day 2s, Top 8s and similar. But those cards primarily, their numbers are... Uh, uh, it's super inflated by their time in Standard, where Primeval Titan has stood the test of time. Similar to how it compares to Tarmogoyf, where Tarmogoyf has not stood the test of time. Tarmogoyf has been crept out of the game, where Primeval Titan is still kind of best in class for what it does. But there are other contenders. Uro is probably the closest, and I feel kind of rough saying Uro is a mono green card. There is a cost to playing the blue part of Uro. And Uro as well, when natural ordered into, doesn't kind of win you the game like Titan does. I still think Titan is better. Eternal Witness has some good numbers from classically being in a lot of old combo decks like Kiki Cord and similar, but again, there have been newer versions of like recursion effects from graveyards that might see play over Witness. Meanwhile, Primeval Titan stands as best in class for what it does. Creator Hearth Behemoth is another famous, powerful finisher card that must make the top five of best green cards ever printed, which this video almost became, but I want to focus on Titan more. But Creator Hoof Behemoth still sees far less play extensively across all formats in multiple decks, especially top decks compared to Titan. And then there's Endurance. This is probably the only one that comes close other than Uro, in my opinion, simply just from numbers. There's a lot of copies of Endurance that get registered in deck lists in leagues and in challenges for formats like Modern and Legacy, because its utility is so damn strong. But often, whilst it's a bit player in your win condition, or your win path, it's not the archetypal card. No one's playing blue green endurance, for example. Not that deck name is super important for whether it's one of the best cards ever printed, but I think it's pretty clear to say that a primeval titan will win you the game when resolved, where an endurance 
can if you're playing against Mill, for example, but I don't think it does in a vacuum. That's a weird statement to say because I, I, I realise that Titan doesn't either. In a vacuum, you don't have any lands, right? But I think you kind of get where I'm going with this. And there's two more contenders. Golgari Grave Troll, for example, is banned in modern right now and has been a key player in dredge decks across every format where they've been playable. It is the best dredge card ever printed. But that's kind of where it sits at, the best dredge card ever printed. I wouldn't say this is the best green creature, because it being a green creature is completely superfluous or completely redundant or unimportant compared to its dredge number. Look at it beside Stinkweed Imp, a five dredge creature in black, that it be a black creature or this being a green creature doesn't really matter. It's just how big the dredge number is. And then our last real big contender is Protein Hulk. Boy, oh boy, is Protein Hulk a good magic card. When comboed alongside Flash, it was winning games on turn zero. That's pretty good. And interestingly, Protein Hulk's power source, or it's why it's good, is very similar to the Titan, in the sense that it allows you to tutor for very specific pieces that combo together to create a win. But Protein Hulk is almost not even a creature. It's arbitrarily a creature. Similar to Golgari Grave Trolls in some ways. It's 6-6 six, six body, or its status as a beast is not really relevant unless you're casting off a Cavern of Souls and actually paying mana for it. In reality, it's a weird combo piece, where being on board for a long time, it can beat faces a 6-6, six, six, but it having trample, or, or having and uh, go to combat and swing doesn't do anything. It's that it's this creature isn't why it's good. I think Protein Hulk probably beats out Titan in terms of how broken it is. If we're talking about like fundamentally how broken a card was or is, Protein Hulk is probably more broken. Same with Golgari Grave Troll, hence the banning in modern. But I think Primeval Titan beats them both out in being a green creature. A card that you ramp into or play even on curve and get a huge amount of value out of. Out of recurring and flickering or going to combat with with, you end up winning the game through a huge amount of almost insurmountable amount of value that it brings with you especially when you start to add things like Field of the Dead and Amulets of Vigor to the equation I want you all to understand that this is not calling for a ban of this card in Timeless or Modern as they're the formats where I'm being, seeing the most amount of play it's just that I want to appreciate that this card from 2010 is still the best green card ever printed they haven't power crept Titan yet they haven't done a Modern Horizons crazy wild version of it that they've done for a lot of other cards. Snapcaster Mage and, and Tarmogoyf and all these classic cards from modern of old, they see a bit of play here and there, but they aren't these archetypal four of powerful powerhouse haymakers that Titan continues to be all these years later. Even when the other four members of its original cycle are basically relegated to Cube or Commander. And that's why it's banned in Commander. And that's why I am sitting here right now talking about how ridiculous, how wicked of a card Primeval Titan is. Did I miss out a green creature that you think is as good as Primeval Titan? Did I not bring up something? Is there is there someone weighing in the sidelines to steal this title from our beloved jolly green giant? Let me know in the comment section below and let me know what you think of this video. And tell me down below if you want me to talk about another topic or another card that is best in class to this extent. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon. Ta-ta for now.